Hey guys, I'm Ruchi Shah and I welcome you all to Mobizium. So we have talked about first impressions, we have done the review of Honor View 10. But uh, what is happening is Honor View 10 is creating a lot of buzz lately and this is majorly because of its camera performance. So today we're going to talk about how the camera is of Honor V10, how AI is playing a role in it and overall how is it performing, like is it good, better or best, we would find out. So after watching this video, make sure if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel, do subscribe it and also subscribe to our Hindi channel. Well, thank you so much for coming. Goodbye. Well, I'm kidding. Let us get started. Starting with the specifications of this phone, it comes with a dual camera setup wherein one is 16 megapixel and the other one is 20 megapixel. The 16 megapixel camera has a RGB sensor whereas the other one that is the 20 megapixel shooter sports or monochrome sensor. The camera setup on V10 is primarily famous because of its neural processing unit which is in Kirin 970 chipset. Now what is this buzz all about? How is this AI based phone gonna help us, gonna be useful to us? So this NPO helps in every efficiently detecting the subject and scene in the image and using the best configurations for maximum image quality. Let us have a quick look at the stock camera app. Now this camera UI is straightforward and to the point. It would give you clean and sleek interface with only the important things right in front of you. And if you swipe right then you get all the settings at one place. And if you swipe left then you'll get host of scenes and shooting modes to choose from. There are several shooting modes to choose from including HDR, 3D panorama, monochrome, night and even slow motion. Fixed on the top are 5 buttons, each for flashlight, wide aperture mode, portrait mode, moving photo capture and secondary camera switch. Alright now with enough of numbers and these informations, let us now talk about our experience with Honor View 10. Starting with the rear camera as it has created this hype of intelligent scene detection. So what are we gonna do is we are gonna switch off all the modes, we are not gonna use any of it and we are not even changing any configuration. Let us see how it is working in this condition. Because as we all know this is where AI is playing its role. It is gonna detect the scenario like is it a landscape mode or are we shooting a pet or some food. So according Accordingly, it would modify the image and give us the result. In short, as I told in our full review that it is gonna work as a professional photographer and it is gonna reduce our work. As you can see here, the results were pretty neat. The rear camera produces some real crisp images in outdoor as well as indoor conditions. So these are some daylight shots which we took in sunlight and as we can see here, it took the cake with a cherry on top. Shots in natural sunlight were beautiful and the colors were extremely detailed. Though pixel definition was good enough and it was able to handle maximum zoom on the image. While the photos taken during the night without any artificial lighting were not very impressive. You can see the device miserably fails to do anything about the low light conditions. You do have a strong flashlight for such conditions but shooting without lights in the night is still going to be a little tough. In artificial lighting conditions, the camera performance wasn't bad at all. Photos are good enough for viewing or social media usage but zoom into image and see that pixel definitions don't exist. This isn't exactly a turn off because this usually is the case with artificial light photos in most of the devices. However, if you're looking for auto image stabilization then the device may not perform well. Most of the shots we took where the camera shook a little bit were majorly blurred. Moving on, the 2x lossless zoom is one of the best things about the device. The image on the left and right were taken with and without the 2x lossless zoom respectively. You can clearly see that there is barely any effect of zoom on image quality and both images are equally clear. With the right one providing better detail in taking long distance shots. Without the lossless zoom also, you can zoom up to 10 times with this device but your image quality will have to pay for the same. Finally, talking about the portrait mode on the rear camera, it does quite an impressive job in blurring the background out. A lot of you might be interested in comparing the portrait mode of U10 with OnePlus 5, so if you're interested, do hit me up in the comment section. For all our selfie addicts there, here is our take on front camera. The photos clicked using the 13 megapixel front camera seemed top notch as well. Since the camera uses its AI technology to detect and control the amount of light, it does a pretty solid job overall. The front camera in natural and artificial light is good as well. 
However, I had a fear that the camera may not be able to handle lights originating from behind the subject. And that is exactly what happened. This image had a visible incident light on the top and the device was unable from suppressing it and affecting the image. Though I have to mention that overall it was a pretty solid performance from the front camera. Portrait mode on front camera seemed to be the biggest disappointment as it always failed to focus on the person's hair. We had a lot of trouble with this. Like apart from few exceptions, almost every shot with the portrait mode was unable to include the person's hair in the focus zone. The Honor V10 packs an interesting feature that is the AR or Augmented Reality Mode which allows you to apply various elements, filters and masks in real time to your photos and videos. This feature looks like Huawei's implementation of Snapchat's filters. So with this device you need not install Snapchat just for clicking puppy face selfies. There are a good number of already existing masks available and you can even download some more from the online repository. Masks work flawlessly and we enjoy clicking a lot of pictures with the AR mode. AR mode also has an option to change the background of the subject. This feature works neat but it isn't as polished as the other one. The backgrounds are pure, cartoonistic and fun to use. However, you won't find perfection as many a times. The camera isn't able to accurately finish the endpoints of the subject. But overall, this feature is great and fun to use. Here in this phone, we can record videos up to 4K using the phone's rear camera and 720p using the front camera. The video recording on this one is pretty standard and there's nothing noteworthy about the video quality. But what we have noticed is that the videos have no stabilization. So you need to be extremely careful while recording with motion. To summarize it, rear camera performed well and it is on par with any other device in the segment. Whereas the front camera did disappoint us a bit in several segments. Like oh, it does not include a hair in the focus region during portrait mode. And we sincerely hope that it will be fixed in the software update in the future. The overall camera experience with this device is extremely easy and intuitive. Like you need not drop a sweat to get a good image from this device. Because most of the times this phone with its AI capabilities would do everything for you. So to conclude it in one statement, the overall camera experience of this phone is exceptional. So that was all about today guys. Thank you so much for coming. Leave a like and subscribe to Mobizium. See you soon.